Fitzroy. Beautifully crafted, cosy and intimate spaces for your drinking and dining experiences. I think the Knights, their time has arrived. I think last week, the 10-man performance in the preliminary final was absolutely exceptional, so I'm going for the Knights. But when you talk of Knights, it's a real fighting team. Muscock into the back of the net. Melbourne Knights take the lead, 1-0. Melbourne Knights will win the Doherty Cup. Looking for a finals berth, that's it! The Croatia fans salute the goal that could be so vital. Good evening, Knights fans. Welcome to week three of the Night Train, where we will be discussing everything and anything Melbourne Knights. I'm your host, Anthony Zovac, and joining me tonight we have Knights Media Operations Manager Dan Pavlich <laughs> and Joshua Parrish. Gentlemen, Thank welcome. Welcome. Thanks. It's good to be back. Oh, well, I mean, after... After, interesting, yeah, uh, interesting, interesting weekend. Yeah. Interesting weekend. Did you catch Only the game one. on the weekend, Josh? I did indeed. I catched it, caught it on delay. So uh, I watched the game today and in full. We were both, well, avoiding spoilers on social media, which was a challenge. <laughs> yes. But uh, I did uh, take in the 90 minutes today. And uh, yeah, plenty of things to discuss. A bit of a disappointing result. But, yeah, um, a bit of a, and we'll get into all that tonight. So uh, just to start off, we'll go through a quick junior update for the weekend. So around four MPL juniors. Under 13s with a 2 1 win. Under 14s boys with a 4 0 loss. Under 15s 3 1 win. And the under 16s were unbeaten. Another big 5 0 win. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I checked today and they're at the top of their ladder. Oh, yeah, they would be. Yeah, they've scored, so. scored about 28 goals or 29 goals or something through, Doing quite well. through four rounds. So well done to the boys. And we're also looking for some more players for a few of our teams. So under 9s boys, born 2008. Under 12 boys. And the under-14 girls, so between 2006 and 2007. And if that's you or anyone you know, contact us at juniors at melbournenights.com.au. And just a quick shout-out to our sponsors, IND Group, Melbourne Croatia Soccer Club, Living Gems Lifestyle Resorts, the Australian Croatian Clubs of Melbourne and Geelong, Form Deck Australia, Rapid Line Office Furniture. And the quick apology last week, uh, Joe Chawner from the under-20 scored a hat-trick. I said the wrong name on the stream. So, Joe, apologies and congratulations for your hat-trick last week, mate. Yeah, nothing little correction there. Uh, well, Just you gotta, you gotta, get gotta, the, uh, the old audio wide out. That's it, out. mate. That's it. You've got to own up to your enough, mistakes. But... And, yeah, Joey, congrats on the hat-trick again, mate. Well done in the 20s. So, boys, recap of round two. Obviously, a disappointing... Round two. Oh, round three, sorry. Yeah. Round three. We can go to round two. I mean, oh, it look. might be a little bit more entertaining. <laughs> Bit of a disappointing result, obviously going down to Dinamore 2 0 away from home. Um, thoughts on the game, Dan? Um, so it was one of the games that I got to watch properly for the first time. Yep. I had a little good a good position up in the uh, Dinamore's gold member uh, yep. box. Yeah, it was look a, it was a disappointing energy, I guess to say the least, from my perspective. Um, there were a couple of players that had some decent moments. Yep. Not enough to say they played well or anything like that, but. Yeah, it was just, I guess, a real flat energy. Yeah. And Dinamore, like from my where I was sitting, I couldn't hear anything. So all I could yeah. see, I couldn't hear any of the 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 buzz or the vibe or the atmosphere. Yeah. But from what I could see, the Dinamore players just came for us, and and they capitalised on it. You know, our kind of lethargic response. Yep. Oh look, look, I, I wasn't that, didn't wasn't actually able to make the game. I had something else on, but I did watch the live stream and. Look, it was a very, very disappointing performance to say the least. Um, the boys, I thought for a derby, should have should have come in a little bit more fired up, shown a bit more fight and a bit more passion. But it, it is, is yeah. look, it is what it is. That's that's football. Sometimes, and I guess we kind of knew going into it, it was going to be a tough match. Yeah, it did, you look, know, regardless of where you are on the on the table at that point in time, you yeah, know, everything football's always fifty fifty. Yeah, and um, especially yeah, for I a guess, Croatian derby, you know. Dinamo was always going to come come up to the game, fired up, and they just looked on the weekend like they they wanted it more. They were winning a lot of the 50-50 sort of balls, 60-40 sort of balls were going their way. Yeah, look. They came to play. And, and I guess got, Bassett, got the Bassett result. terrorised oh, us. Form. Bassett was Start absolutely unbelievable on the weekend. No, he had 15 minutes in, he had a screamer of a shot. Yeah, a bit unlucky to come off the post for him. 
unlucky uh, by lucky for us. Lucky for us, of course. And then we had obviously in that first half as well, Duncan's header. You know, yeah, Duncan's header. The cross, um, great cross um, in from Yildiz. Yeah, great as well. cross. But, and look, unfortunately, Albano was sort of stuck, stuck yeah. with the ball coming straight at him, blocked it off the line, and that sort of goes in. You're looking at maybe a different game if we're you know one 0 yeah. up going into the half. But that for me was the moment, the moment that kind of would have turned everything. Yeah, and it's one of those chances that you you miss and. Yeah. You know, again, look, the boys came out you, after half time. I thought they looked pretty good in the first 15 to sort of 20 minutes, but again, just didn't do enough with those periods where you're dominating a game. Yeah. You you really need to be clinical and take advantage of that. Obviously, they didn't, and you know, Dinamo came through, scored scored a couple of quick goals there, and you know, yeah. Look, took, I was lucky enough game. to um to get a quick minute in with um the captain Joey Franic yeah um after the match. Let's have a listen what he had to say. Nice fans, I'm here with Captain Joey Franic. Joey, what happened on the park today? Um, yeah, disappointing result. Look, we knew it was going to be tough going uh, away to Dinamo. They've they've had a win and a, a draw and they're flying high and there was a big turnout of uh, Dinamo supporters and I thought first half we came out a bit slow but then, then I think we took control of the game. Unfortunately, we just uh, weren't penetrating enough but... I think it was a lacklustre game, sort of, with both teams and the, and the weather that it was. And then went to half-time, nil-nil, second half we came out. And again, I thought, I thought we were on top first half of the second half until they scored. And then when they scored, it was just backwards from there for us and sort of an unacceptable performance and something we need to really go back and, and work on and improve on. Yeah, well, look, I think Joey hit the nail on the head there. Um... We had, we had opportunities there in that 15 to sort of 20 minutes after the half where we were in control of the game. If we'd maybe been a bit more clinical in a few spots there, you know, you may be looking at a different result. But like you said, unacceptable performance from the boys and they, you know, need to take a good hard look in the change room this week, look internally, look to themselves for some motivation coming in for a you know, big home game this week against Hume. And, you know, I think for, I'll speak for most fans when I say that if you can see, if you go to a game on, on the weekend or whenever it is, and you can see the boys have put in 120% and you go away with the loss, you can, it still hurts, but you can sort of take that on yeah. the chin when it's like this and it's, you're leaving a game or, you know, watching a game and you, you're leaving thinking you know, there's definitely more we could have done. We could have done so many things differently, played better, played harder. It's, it's a lot harder to take the loss like that. Yeah. I, I think the, the difficulty is that getting into a kind of energy intensity battle with St Albans is going to be a losing one this season. Yeah. They have monstered teams just through sheer effort and intensity. Yeah. If you look at the yeah, Green Gully the game, you know, Green Gully were at sea. They didn't know what was coming out of them. Obviously, there was a red card in that one. But yeah. even before that, you know, just the sheer, uh, you know, pace and, and intensity and getting to those balls first. And, uh, you know, if you try and uh, match them in that area, it's going to be difficult for you. But yeah. I think... Maybe the Knights didn't help themselves in that they didn't manage to keep possession for long periods. They were struggling yep. to find midfield players. Yep. A lot of the time they felt like there was a big gap between the defence and the midfield in possession. And yep. you know it was difficult to maybe just settle on the ball and, and get players in space. Yep. And there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of long balls to the flanks, a lot of long balls to the forwards because it wasn't really connecting in that area of the yep. park. So I, I felt that maybe the, the Knights didn't, you know, try and tie them out enough by moving the ball. It was they sort of got sucked into playing St. Yeah, Albans game. We I look watching the game back I watched the game back again today and it, it definitely did look like that. We sort of got sucked into especially in that second half after that first sort of fifteen, twenty minutes or so playing their their style of football. Mm. You know, St. Albans is a much narrower ground to our obviously our home ground's a bit smaller, it's a bit tighter. You gotta adjust how you, how you play a game on a on a surface like that and you know I think St. Albans Took advantage of how we sort of came out and yeah got the result. Yeah, it was there were gusty conditions and yeah. I guess you know when I watched the playback last night, there were a lot of long balls completely bypassing the midfield and a lot of those long balls just missed the mark. Yeah, they're a little bit too early or too late and they were always collected by Dinamo players, who then were maybe able to convert it into something a play for themselves, but. Yeah, yeah, look, look, it's it still is early days. I don't think it's just just time yet to hit the panic Absolutely. button. You know, it's, you're three weeks in, three weeks into the year. Obviously, it's isn't in the start we were sort of looking for coming into the season. But there's still a lot of football to go, and I think Stuart Munro had something very similar to say in the interview 
we had with him, if we can bring that up. Thanks, Drew, for taking the time with us. What were your thoughts on today's match? Yeah, look, obviously, um, very disappointed in the in the result. Um, uh, and obviously, the performance wasn't what we expected either. Um, first half, we, we uh, I don't think we really took the game to to St Albans at all, but I thought in the second half with probably a little bit of wind advantage I thought we were just starting to find our feet we were starting to put them under a little bit of pressure and, and probably had the lion's share of the game at that point when they, uh, they went forward and got their first goal and um, I just felt from that goal we never really recovered from it, we just seemed to let our heads go down for some reason, I've no idea why when you look at this same group of players that fought so hard with 10 men against Port Melbourne just two weeks ago and um, you know they were literally one kick of the ball away from getting three points last week to, to let their heads go down so quickly um, after our first goal was very disappointing and, and obviously they followed up seven minutes later with a second goal, a very similar type of goal as well, um, both goals very disappointing from our point with the defending uh, I really need better defending to take place um, if we're going to achieve anything and uh, look it's a long way to go and, and I, I'm not getting too carried away I don't I don't you know at some stage you're going to lose games at some stage you're going to start winning games um, I'm very confident that we will hit our straps I, I always said that the first five six games when you turn over so many players is, is always a little bit difficult you've got to uh, just hope that you can take something out of games and get a few wins along the way while you're settling in and while you're getting the players to, to get to know each other um, but certainly we've got what to do but um, you know we'll come back bigger and stronger yeah well said I think from the coach you know Absolutely. it's still very early doors We've had a lot of changes coming through the squads with new new additions and players leaving at the end of last season you know it's going to take a bit of time for the boys to adjust obviously the effort needs to get better but you know I think we just yeah. need to back the boys in and things things will turn around if you Absolutely. Look, yeah if, if you look back to last season Oakley started the year absolutely horribly they didn't get a win till round nine they ended up making the finals and you know, lost in the semi-final, but one win away from going to the grand final after starting horribly. So, yeah. you know, Chris Taylor was coaching them last year. I think Stuart Munro, in terms of level of coaching in Victoria, is up there. So, you know, stability is key here. You've got to just back the coach in, trust what he's doing, trust the system he's operating under the players he's brought in. And fans fans around the club, you know, don't drop your heads just yet, fellas. We've yeah, got you... it's a long season ahead. It's not an ideal start, but there's plenty of time to make up for it. And I've got complete faith in the coaching staff and the, and the squad that we will. Yeah, you don't want to lose sight of the forest from the trees, you know. It's round three. It's a huge change from last season. A new coach, a new assistant coach, a new performance team coming in, new players, you know. There was a great comment made over the weekend, pressure makes diamonds. So, yeah. you know, let's you know, keep be level-headed um, and, and, you know, not throw the baby out with the bathwater, I guess, in this case. It was a terrible – like, it was a terrible performance. It was a bad loss, but it's round three. It's so, round three, exactly. Let's – but I think um, something Stuart did say that I wouldn't mind uh, discussing a little is our defence was pretty bad. Um, and we let oh, – we can talk about Bassett as well. Floyd yeah. Dinamore, amazing. We afforded him so much space. No one really contained him and he yeah. punished us for it. Yeah, he, look, he, he was absolutely phenomenal on the weekend, Bassett. Really good pick-up by Dinamore or St Albans. And um, you know, I think the – you know, when you watch, watch – I watched the game back again today and he just looked like he had all the space he, he wanted on the ball, time first, on the ball. His first goal we just wandered in, oh, unopposed. Yeah. And right in the right place at the right time. Right time, and, right place, right time. You know, he was, to him and he just he was unlucky. He was unlucky not to score in the first half. There was a great shot that hit, hit the post, came out and fizzled across the face of the goal. But, you know, it's – when you're going to – got look, uh, like Josh was saying before – when you go into a place like St Albans, you know it's always it's a tough place to go to. It's a tough place to travel to. The fans are going to be up and at you the whole game, especially with it being a derby. You know you need to come. You need to come with your best effort. Come switched on and ready for a game. And honestly, watching the game back today didn't look like that from the mm. boys on the weekend. What about from Watson? It was relatively yeah look, contained. Contained. And again, I think Wilson Cony as a centre backs for Dynamo did did pretty well in containing him. But again, I think that comes back to the midfield it was really outplayed by Dynamo's midfield over the weekend. So. You know, some of it might be a good centre back mm. play, but it, you know he wasn't getting much service. Over yeah. no, that's yeah. a good point. Hammer thrives on service and yeah. chances. I mean, so you can't you can't expect him to score goals like he did yeah. at Port Melbourne. Where yeah, he look, just bullies he, it his way through. You can't expect yeah. that every week. No, He'll look, do it every now and again, but look, you know, he's always he needs... happy when he does. But look, exactly like you just said, you can't expect him to turn mm. turn from nowhere just make something out of nothing. But to week be fair, in, to be fair, the uh, if Bassett was man of the match, I think Wilkes was probably. Up there was, as well. He was up there. He, played superb. A, he played a great game. Um, weekend. And he, he really kept Hammer in his pocket, pocket unfortunately. Yeah. Um, there are sort of two things that St. Albans really do that I think um, 
Stuart Munro would be very, uh, you know, upset that they're nice and really clock on to. And one is they pressure off the second balls in the yeah. first touch. It's always just on you to, to spring that transition moment and then nick it off you. And the other one is getting in behind that space between the, the center back and the fullback. Yeah. And they've done it a couple of times with those cutbacks, those little, little low crosses into the box. They get into that area with quick throw-ins, with, yeah. you know, little runs into the channels from their attacking midfield players um, or getting around the back of the fullback with the winger. And I think that's just communication with the new players. Yeah. Um, knowing who's responsible for that space, whether it's center back or fullback, knowing how to hold the line and, and prevent that uh, sort of thing from happening. And I, I think that's, you know, what will really disappoint the the coaching staff with the defending is that we didn't, you know, protect that space yeah. well. And you gave them essentially two tap-ins from, from pretty close yeah. range as a result. A disappointing way to cop goals like that when you've, you know, first half was, I'd say, fairly back and forth. Second half we started well. And then when you two really bad lapses in defending, give away two... Two basically tap-ins and, you know, Dinamo in the last probably 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes of the game had another one fizzle across the face of the goal that they were, were probably lucky they didn't get another foot on. It could have very easily been a 3-0 in the last sort of 20 to mm. 25 minutes. But they tend to run over the top of you once they do get a lead yeah. as well, St. Yeah. Albans. How much uh, does it come down to missing Breeze as well? Because that suspension obviously is not something that the coaching yeah. staff would have factored into at the start and he's a bit of the linchpin in the midfield. Oh, look, that's def- it definitely hurts with Breeze out and also McGarry is still probably – couple of weeks away from coming into the squad. So when you sign two two big experienced players to play in that midfield when they're both both missing early doors, especially when the squad's still sort of melding together, everyone's still figuring each other out and you're missing two players that you signed to be linchpins in that midfield, it definitely does hurt. And I think a lack of creativity was evident on the weekend. But you know, McGarry you know, if he's a few weeks away, Breeze will see what happens with the suspension. I think the club's going to the tribunal this week to see what we can do about that. But mm. You know, I think just coming into next week with the game this Friday, you know, the boys just need to come switched on, heads up. Still early days, but, you know, need to put in a shift this week after a disappointing loss over the weekend. Let's take a break, guys, and we'll come back and we'll just recap the uh, the other games from the round. The Night Train is brought to you by St Andrews Hotel, 128 Nicholson Street, Fitzroy. Beautifully crafted, cosy and intimate spaces for your drinking and dining experiences. Introducing Lanco Group for innovative engineering consulting services. Lanco Group provides superior civil engineering and innovative solutions to developers, local government and service authorities. Working closely with clients, Lanco Group helps meet the complex infrastructure requirements for residential, commercial and industrial developments. On time, on budget. Find out more at lancogroup.com.au. Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. Are you looking to change your destiny in life? Be your own boss? Start your own business? If you are, you need people who understand your needs and are committed to helping you make it happen. At DKP & Co Chartered Accountants, we are more than just accountants. We are business advisors, taxation consultants and strategists that specialised in setting up businesses. We understand the client and give them the very best customised advice and strategies to achieve their goals. Visit our website dkpco.com.au or give us a call today on 03 9023 9370. Fast, proactive, personal. That's DKP and Co. Chartered Accountants. Life is too short for bad internet and the customer service that comes with it. At Mate, we pride ourselves in providing great value NBN internet and service that Aussies deserve. Let us be your defence on the field and save yourself against bad internet. Mate is made by football fans for football fans. Choose a provider you can trust like a mate. Call us on 13 14 13 or visit letsbemates.com.au to sign up today. See you soon, mate. All right, guys, let's take a, w- a little bit of a walk around for the, uh, the other MPL Vic round three games. So we around had well, Friday night, we had... The Sharks against the Lions, 3-0. Three Sharks won that one pretty convincingly. Uh, we also had Avondale and Green Gully at Green Gully's home. That was a 2-0 win for Avondale. Oakley Cannons and South. And a stalemate, 0-0. Josh. 
You were at the game, said, Josh? Yeah, the break you told us you were there. How was that? I was there. I was uh, not commentating, just enjoying uh, the uh, the bar at Oakley and uh, enjoying the... Their... Decent Savlaki at a Greek club? Oh, yeah. It's it's a good Savlaki there. Um, unlike, uh, unlike, unlike, down... Lakeside. Yes. unlike Lakeside. Unlike Lakeside. Like eating gravel. <laughs> Uh, it was a bit of a, a nothing game. Fantastic crowd, great atmosphere. Two and a half k there or something. Yeah. It was. Uh, Karagunas made an appearance. They mm-hmm. uh, they had a big song and dance about that. Um, but you know the uh, the actual action on the field was pretty pretty a uh, rough watch. Um, I did enjoy it, but you know maybe the refreshments helped. Um, <laughs> honestly, there was a red card after ten minutes or so. Lucas Portelli clipped the the striker's heels as he yeah, was yeah. going to go through on goal. Pretty clear red card. Um, despite what you know, Chris Taylor and Co had to say about it, and <laughs> CT went, "No, nah, we're having a point here. We're shutting this down." And Oakley proceeded to not play football for the rest of the game, <laughs> which was their prerogative. It's fine. Um, I thought they might pinch one on you know on a set piece or something, but they didn't really show a lot of amb- attacking ambition. But the thing is, neither did South Melbourne. I mean, they've got a good defensive uh, unit there, but I just don't know how they're going to score goals. Like they play this back five. And Jerry Salados is their only, you know, creative outlet. Yep. He looks like he's going to do anything. And the manager keeps subbing him off before he's had a chance to <laughs> impact the game. He, go, he comes off before the hour mark every week. Yep. And I'm like, I look, he's got, this bloke's got a UEFA A license or something. So surely he knows more than me. I don't know, mate. But it seems clear as day. The, the South fans actually booed him when he subbed Salados <laughs> off. And I heard a few shouts that you don't know what you're doing coming from the from the hill where the most of the... Uh, South fans were uh, standing and, you know, I don't know, maybe he's staging a protest. Maybe he's not getting paid on time or something because like, what, <laughs> oh, what look, are It doesn't sound doing? like anyone's getting paid on time at South <laughs> Melbourne these days. Like it was such a ridiculous change. And then he just stayed with the back five for the entire game, refused to bring on, you know, an extra midfielder or a striker for one of those defenders who were not carrying the ball into midfield. The back three at all it was just attritional stuff. And Harrison Sawyer had one really good chance to win it at the end of the game, but it was at his feet instead of his head, so of course it didn't go in. And uh, yeah, look, I, I, th- I don't see how they're going to score goals this season, even though they have recruited pretty heavily. It was a massive chance for them to to knock off uh, Oakley for the first time in years and years. It seems like uh, gone begging. All right, so let's move on. After that, we had Heidelberg and Altona at uh, at, at the uh, Burgers home ground, three one home ground home yeah. victory for, for Heidelberg. Heidelberg. Dandy Thunder and Bentley Greens, 1-0 to Thunder. And That's a good win for Thunder. Good win Should for have Thunder. been 2-0. It was over the line, the uh, long shot from Harley Orr, but didn't count. So The goalkeeper tipped it onto the crossbar. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh, and it spun it. off the crossbar and went down clearly over the line and slowly as well. Like it wasn't – like it yeah. took the, – the tip off the keeper's gloves took the yeah. momentum out of it. So the ball dropped slowly, clearly over the line, and the assistant ref didn't give it. Like the player who hit it, and it was a great strike from, you know, 25 metres or something on the half volley – uh, he, he was already celebrating and <laughs> didn't it's count. So it should have been two, but uh, Thunder will be delighted. And Bentley, a few, been protesting. Few, few teething pro- problems for uh, Nick Tolius. Yes, it was uh, at Thunder's home ground, yeah. so uh, they were they were absolutely livid. But, yeah, a few, <laughs> few teething problems for Nick Tolius. I think you're seeing that the clubs with lots of new signings are just struggling to gel in the first few rounds, and, and maybe the Knights are, are in yeah. that boat as that's well. That's kind of expected. You know? Yeah, look, it take, takes a bit of time to get a new squad together. Absolutely. All right, next is uh, our next week, our, our round four for opponents, next week. Hume City and Dandy Thunder. That was a 2-1 victory to Hume City. Great goal in that game. Yeah, it was – they've – I've watched their highlights for the last couple of rounds. They've scored some amazing goals with some fantastic pieces of play, not just scrappy goals. Yeah. Well-crafted football goals. Mm. They're they, going to be a tough team. Yeah, they're a serious they're unit a this team. year, Hume. It's going to yeah. be a very interesting game coming Dandy up Dandy City week. were – not that impressive, to be honest. Uh, they were playing Troy Ruthven in the heart of a back three, which I don't think is maybe the best use of his talents. He didn't seem to be enjoying playing there anyway. Mm. But they took the lead with a, a absolute belter from Nick Kalmar, who does yeah. that at least once every season. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's got a few <laughs> goals down next Contender, game. right? Contender he, for goal of the... Goal of the season. Because he slipped before it as well, and he regained his footing and thought, no, nah, I'm having this. And yeah. in off the post as well. It doesn't... Like, it was right in the top yeah. right corner. I think corner. it was a shot on goal or maybe a cross gone astray <laughs> or... I've seen those happen. You know, it's no, not, it's not out, the, uh, no, out of the blue. No, 100% intentional, this one. He yeah. had no teammates ahead of him, so... Just uh, take they, a crack. Yeah. He doesn't... It's not often that Michael Weir just stands there and and watches yeah. it go in. Um, he, <laughs> yeah, usually, he, he, he usually he usually lost. You know, he was just just uh, watching it whistle up. past. Yeah, I know. 
There but comes a point you just watch it and you're like, that's... Yeah, not much you can do about that. <laughs> and uh, Heiduk looked pretty good defensively and then Hume switched things around a bit, brought, brought Bingham off for uh, Andy Brennan up front and he gave him a little bit more of a technical player to, to hold the ball up and, and, you know, rather than the aerial threat that Bingham is. And I think that, that turned things around for them a bit. And, yeah, some really nice team goals. They worked a couple of... Uh, tap-ins essentially, especially that equaliser if you mm. go back and watch it. It's a pinned ball from yeah. the other side of the field. Great interchange of passing, punch through past the finds James Brown, then he squares it side diagonally across the area for a tap-in. It's the kind of football that, you know, indicates that a side's really clicking. And, Absolutely. Yeah, humour yeah. are real danger contenders this season. They're top of the table. Top yeah. of the table. Well, they're, they're the only team with all three uh, all three wins in their, in their bag at the moment. And you can see that, that they gel from all of their matches. Yeah. Their goals are clever. Yeah. Yeah, look, me and Dan were actually having a chat on the way up here today. And, you know, Hume over the last few years, Haggerty obviously played there prior to now. He's coaching there. They've kept a good core of the squad together. You know, they've recruited well over the last few years, kept the good players around. And, you know, players like Andy Brennan, you know, Bingham, they've got got some real threats up front. Mm. It's going to make for an interesting match this Friday. I think the player to shut down is Steve Hewitt in midfield. Mm. He is uh, very good. He, he's not not the same sort of player as, say, Bassett on the weekend. Bassett yeah. might more yeah. of a dribbler, like a versatile yeah. kind of uh, quick number 10. Hewitt is, is a standard liver kind of playmaker. He does play in the 10 spot, mm-hmm. but he just drifts all over the park. Yeah. He'll he'll pop up deep, sort of in almost a fullback position to pick up the ball while the fullback goes up the flank. Yeah. So he's very hard to track, and I don't know if you put a player on him and, you know, compromise his shape yeah. or if you try and defend him a bit more zonally, but he's yeah. he's probably the key figure. And then, of course, like James Brown and Mitch Cooper have the individual skill yeah. to do anything. You just sort of have to try and deny them the ball as much as possible and not let them turn as well. So, yeah, they've got tacking threats. I think uh, Hewitt is the, the distributor, though, that you've got to watch out for. Well, all those players that you've mentioned have scored goals for them in the last yeah. three games. Hewitt scored a brace in, in their opening round match. Mm. Yeah. And James... Gordon, their round two match. Cooper, Lazaridis, round three. Like, yeah. They've got options. Yeah, they've had – we've been sure. looking over the team of the week over the last last couple of weeks. They've had a player in the squad both yeah. both weeks up. They've been mm-hmm. playing some good football. You know, we're going to have to be up for the game on Friday night because, you know, Hume's coming in. really going to have to step up. Yeah, Hume's, yeah. Hume's coming in in good form. You know, they've got – they talent. scored more than blocked at least two goals every match. Yeah, you know, so with, with how our defence played last week, I think, you know, they really need to – Step up coming into this weekend. You know, Hume up front are dangerous, as we've just gone through, you know. So it's going to be a big test for the boys, but I think it's it's a good opportunity for us to Absolutely. sort of step up as a squad this week. And This is you know, where you kind of prove it. You know, you've come yeah. back from a, a bad loss. You well, shake off the cobwebs and you move yeah. into it, right? You two, don't... two really disappointing results over the last two weeks for, for various reasons. Yeah. It's a good opportunity for people, the players in the squad, to stand up and show why. Absolutely. You know, what it means to them to wear the red, white and blue that is Melbourne, Croatia, know. you know? Well, we play fantastic against Port Melbourne with 10 men, yeah. you know. I think Some of that deserve needed. the point out of that. Round two, we were unlucky to get the three points. It was that last, you know, 10 seconds. Yeah. We would Definitely. have had three points there. But, yeah, coming into round four, I think mm. you just got to... Yeah, look, it's going to be a good opportunity for a lot of people, the boys in the squad, to step up, show their medal and, you know, show what... What they are. How do you think Jordy did between the sticks? Jordy coming in for, look, uh, for for coming in. I think uh, Jordy Jordy yeah. did all right. I don't think either either goal nah. that we considered was really his fault. No, that was more you know in the run of play. More defensive. He didn't have a, to... didn't really have a lot to do, but he did everything he needed to do pretty much. You know, Absolutely. I don't think he could have done much more about either goal that we conceded. Him coming in, I think he played a decent game. You know, off the bench, I think Mikulic offered something going forward in the last sort of fifteen twenty. There was a couple of you know. Little dribbles and stuff on the wing, got a few few balls in, but you know, I think the rest of the squad is, yeah, looking to bounce back yeah. coming th- into the game this weekend. I think this game against Hume, the downfall of Dandy City was that they basically played too conservative and they didn't give themselves enough options on the break. They were playing basically a five three two, and they didn't have any options wide once they got the ball because their yeah. wing backs were sitting so deep. I don't think the Knights will set up like that. I think they'll yeah. go for the you know back four with high, you know high wingers, and I think you can hurt Hume on the flanks on the break because they push their fullbacks so high because they don't play yeah. with genuine wingers. They play with Brown and Cooper, and they drift inwards. They swap yeah. positions. They, but they basically they sit inside in that space between defender and fullback. 
but in front of them so that they want to suck one of those players in and then turn them. And then their fullbacks go high and they overlap. Um, and I think you can really hurt Hume on the break in the wide areas. But Dandy City, because they were playing that back three, back five, they didn't have any wide options on the break. All they had was their two men up front and they just couldn't find numbers and combinations once they won the ball. So it always broke down and they were never putting Hume on the back foot. So they were just absorbing pressure for the entire second half yeah. until they were going for the equaliser at the end and there was a bit of a mad scramble. But I think you can you can hurt Hume off, off set pieces. There was a couple of um, big chances for Danny City at the end of the game and especially on the counter-attack on the flanks, I think the Knights can hurt them because you've got a player like Albano in particular yeah, who can – it's a big game for him. He yeah, needs to he needs to him. really step up and get the service and be yeah. running at defenders in transition. That's, I think, the, yeah. the place that I can see the Knights getting the most joy. Yeah, look, Albano's work rate over the f- first sort of two or, three, two or three rounds has been has been good. I think him, like a few players in the squad, just looking like they're not, not quite there yet. You know, they're, that touch in the final third, a bit, bit of the link-up play – is lacking at the moment, and I think that comes down to the boys haven't really been playing with each other that long. There's been a lot of new additions in the squad. We've discussed that a lot yeah. tonight. You know, it's for me. Albano's work rate's been pretty, pretty yeah. Good no, it has definitely has been. Yeah, I think he just maybe hasn't been served the ball in the right areas. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think there was anything wrong with his performance, particularly on the weekend. Yeah. He just didn't get many opportunities to run at players, and that's when I I find Obama the most threatening. It's not yeah. when he's facing with his back to goal, but when he's facing yeah. forwards, and when you need to get him right. facing forwards and. I think Hume will have a lot of the ball on uh, on Friday because they've just got very good midfield and they do play quite patient build up play. Um, but the, yeah, I think you, that means that you can get Albino facing goal on the break, dribbling and creating a bit of havoc. Yeah, well, look, Albino will be my, he's my player to watch this week. I'm tipping him Friday. for a really big performance this, this Friday night. Who do you say your player player looking forward to this week is, Dan? Let me have a think about that one. Oh, this week. I'm hoping McDonald shows up. Yeah. You know, in preseason, he was uh, I really rated him. Yeah. You know, against um, Dinamo, he was kind of muted. Yeah, didn't really notice his presence. But I'm hoping, yeah, he can uh, step up to the park as well. Yeah. This, this this Friday night. That's it. Well, what about your round? Uh, your moment of the match. Uh, your moment, moment of, of the, the weekend. Round. Oh, look, yeah. I, I, that Cal my goal was probably my highlight for the round. That was absolutely unbelievable. What great about, hit. What about absolutely yours, great hit. Uh, yeah, I think the Calmar goal was great. Um, Carpenter also scored an Olympico um, against Gully. That was mm-hmm. pretty special. And I did like Greg Blake's commentary on it. Yep. It was an absolute rip snort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Speaking of that. commentary, my uh, my moment had to uh, had to be this one from our own game against Dinamo. That's uh, Adam Ulutash commenting on our game. <laughs> you yeah, can swear of... he's been carried off by an angry mob or something. Yeah, it sounds like he's been dragged out of the commentator's box, to be honest. <laughs> Great job, William, but a uh, very, very funny little moment there. First yes. goal. Yes. All right, let's, uh, let's cut to a break and then we'll come back and we'll discuss some community news and, in, and other things that we've got on. The Night Train is brought to you by St Andrews Hotel, 128 Nicholson Street, Fitzroy. Beautifully crafted, cosy and intimate spaces for your drinking and dining experiences. Australia's largest corporate soccer tournament is coming your way. And the grand prize for the entire winning team? Seven tickets to fly to Spain and watch a La Liga game. The Legends Cup, together with global football partner La Liga and powered by Vitamin D Guru, kicks off in Melbourne on the 21st of March, with the finals on the 28th of March. It's a -a five-a-side comp, and you and six colleagues could be flying to Spain for a dream La Liga experience. Remember, you don't have to be a professional footballer to join. The champions get to watch a major La Liga match, go sightseeing, on a stadium tour, and enjoy the best Spain has to offer. Spots are running out fast. Go to legendscupofficial.com.au. That's legendscupofficial.com.au. Book your team in now. Since 1998, Lanco Group has been providing superior civil engineering solutions and advice to developers, local government and service authorities across Australia. Lanco Group is known for delivering sustainable, efficient solutions. By working closely with clients, Lanco Group is able to meet the complex infrastructure requirements for residential, commercial and industrial developments on time, on budget. Find out more at lancogroup.com.au. Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. Kick off 2020 with thrilling savings at Northern Motor Group. 
As a proud FNR supporter, Northern Motor Group are offering new deals across their new and used car range. Two huge locations, nine popular brands to choose from, including Jeep, Chrysler, Fiat, Abarth, Isuzu Ute, Kia, MG, Nissan and their newest edition, Ram. Find your new car this new year. Visit northernmotorgroup.com.au, your one-stop shop for sales, services and parts in the northern suburbs. Northern Motor Group, Grimshaw Street, Bundura, driving Melbourne's north, LMCT 6595. Fans, thanks for joining us on tonight's show. Um, we're going to move now into a little bit of community news outside of the uh, football realm that uh, that still has a uh, night's nice connections. Yeah, so we had the Muggers in concert, obviously hosted by the club on Saturday night. It was a huge, huge, concert. huge, huge a, event. About Absolutely a thousand huge. people. A thousand people. Yeah. For uh, so we usually run an event in o- in October, a little like Croctoberfest we call it, a little spin on Oktoberfest. Um, that's usually our biggest event of the year, but this was, you know, for a non. Oktoberfest event. It was yeah, it huge. was absolutely huge. Oh, look, Zovek yeah. and I were behind the bar. Yeah, behind the bar for the night. And <laughs> Could be dangerous. Oh, I actually couldn't believe how many people we got down there. It was a, it was a great concert. Yeah, from great what we, concert. From what I could see. Yeah. I didn't get to see uh, see much of the stage. I like ducked out a little bit, but it was a great atmosphere, great vibe. Doing that kind of thing for the community at the club is, is yeah, you know, look, one of the things I think is really That's one of those things us. that make our club sort of special, the fact that we are a community club and there's – you know, these concerts and events and stuff we put on for people of all varying age groups through our community, it's really what makes us who we are. And, you absolutely. know, the, the event on the weekend was absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Stellar. It was well run. I think the uh, the band had a great time. I think they were out shopping today in Melbourne, <laughs> taking <laughs> yes, advantage yes. of the, uh, the Melbourne shopping. Uh, yeah, finding some Euro trash stores oh, in Melbourne. Central. something like that. <laughs> we saw some pictures today. But, yeah, it was, a, it was a great event, a great turnout. Thank you to everyone that came, supported the club. You got to see a band that you probably wanted to see for a very long time. And, yeah, hopefully we can do some more stuff like that in the future. But thank you very much. We are, we all appreciate it greatly. Yes, yes. And also community news. Um, the women – or actually footballing news, rather. The not senior women's team are still looking for a few players. So if that sounds like you and you'd be interested in coming down to the Knights to have a kick – Contact Gus Flores at gmail.com or the club directly at melbournenights.com.au. Admin at melbournenights.com.au if you're interested in that, girls. They are, they're always looking to add new players to the team. The yeah. season's starting, I think, around April. Yeah, so it's still a few months away. New but competition. New and competition, new league. Yeah. The women are stepping up, so come down. Have a kick with the girls, support the club, and trainings every Tuesday and t- Thursday Tuesday, nights, Thursday seven nights. p.m. from memory. So you can always just come down to the club, make yourself known, and they'll be super hospitable. They're a great team. Come we, on down. Have we mentioned the over forty five? Oh yes, and the over forty fives are still, the, uh, still looking that, for players. So. Yes, MJ Windsor says any fossils interested in getting active and playing <laughs> for the over forty fives team, shoot the club an email. It's the same address: admin at melbournenights.com.au. dot uh, Speaking of Facebook Live comments. We've had a lot of uh, commentary on your shirt, Zovac. Uh, Pasco says, Zovac looking like the main character of Where Isn't Wally. <laughs> <laughs> found him. Found him, mate. You found him, right here. In my stud. Stipe says, take your shirt off, Zovac. Mm. Uh, uh, no, says, no, one, no one wants to see it on the no, Facebook. I don't know. Uh, Stipe Shimich won't want to see that. Uh, <laughs> I think that came from him. Come on, next <laughs> week, mate. You can take your shirt off with me. Peta says, oh, oh, hoops are unforgiving. Uh, yeah. That's a bit, bit unkind. Um, what is? The hoops, hoops are apparently unkind. Pashka says, sack Tom Lukic. Hashtag Lukic Yeah, out. look, and I think that's one of our biggest trending trending comments over the last last year in a bit of the night train. Sack Tom Lukic. Yeah. Uh, Denko says, very true words from Stuart. It's a long NPL season. And the quality of our boys is undeniable. Time to let the squad scratch the le- stretch the legs and reach full stride. Um, yeah. Go yeah, absolutely. That's, 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 the, uh, that's the attitude. That that's the attitude. Doing. And another lovely comment from my mother saying the boys just need to kick the ball in the goal. So thanks, Mum, yeah. for that bit if of only, footballing wisdom. <laughs> that is a gem. That is a pearl of wisdom right there. If only it was that simple. No, just it's only that easy. You should, have just told, you should have just told Watson before the game, just yeah. kick kick the ball, yeah. make sure it goes Maybe in. Maybe you should get your mum in halftime yeah. or, or Half, pre-game uh, pep talks. Halftime chats from uh, Slavitz is over. Yeah. <laughs> And Ante is asking Nick Yurchich if his missus broke his ribs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> uh, 
Oh no. I've looked. If there's anyone's missus who could break their ribs, it's Nick's. Like, <laughs> he's in. He's he's batting well well above there. And Slavica says, Anthony, just tell him to kick it in the goal. Yes, so, there is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, mum. Good. Good. When are you going to get your Barker back on the line? Ah, uh, Barker back on the line. Oh, look, Barker's been a bit quiet the few last yes. few weeks. You know, I think she might have been at the concert on Saturday, uh, so she might still be a bit partied out. Uh, to be honest, no way. Well, double nine, double four, double nine, double nine. If you would like to, uh, if my grandmother or house. anyone else wants to call in, <laughs> here's the number. And the text line is zero four two eight nine three 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 four five. As most of you guys know, we've got our next round four home game this Friday night. Kickoff at seven thirty. Gates Street. open a little bit before that, around six thirty. But the Melbourne Croatia Soccer Club beer garden and restaurant is open from five thirty onwards. So come in, have a feed, make your way down to the stadium. It's always a great atmosphere. We love putting on a show for you guys at Night Stadium. Come on down. You Come know, we've down. got the uh, the Quarry Hill. There's a little barbecue going on there. There's action all around the stadium, to be action honest. All around it's a great, the stadium. great, uh, great atmosphere. Prediction for this weekend, Dan scores? 3-2. Oh. 3-2? Two. Three, two. I feel like I see 3-2. Our oh, way. Our way. Of course, well, I'm going to say our way. I was hoping you our way. I always feel like I see 3-2 at night stadium. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, I'm, I'm tipping a 2-1 result this weekend. Oh. Obviously going to the Knights. Josh? I'm going to tip a one old draw. I yep. think Humo are looking pretty sharp. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, I think the Knights will be, get a big response from them after yep. the disappointment of, of this week's derby loss. But, you know, Humo have looked pretty tidy. So I, I reckon 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Oh, they've been looking pretty tidy for a while. Yeah. What, they won the uh, Doherty Cup last year. Yeah, well, so that's not – we played them we in played the Doherty Cup that. final last year. And, you know, they've, they've played pretty well against us in both games in the league. So, you know, it's – Big opportunity for a few of the boys that were in the squad last year in that Doherty Cup final to maybe take revenge this Friday night and get the result, get the point, get the points. Do you reckon we'll see some uh, human renter crowds tonight at, at, on Friday again? Oh the, look, uh, uh, the Red and White Army. The Red yeah, and White Army sprung it's, up it's not, they were, not they were big last year, our... but they didn't come apart. From, they came to the Doherty Cup final, but they missed both fixtures against us in the league. So, mm. I like FFE's like dropping balls. Looks like they don't have the balls to rock up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well. I mean, uh, we might see some some safe smoke from the Hume Actives. Uh, <laughs> I think maybe, they'll come down. Maybe some shisha. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vape. Oh, nice. and following something else we had last year, guys, we've got some someone looking for love on the text line. Oh yeah, we do. So since tonight's show is dedicated to women, I would like to announce publicly that I'm looking <laughs> for a seasoned, experienced woman between the lovely age of fifty and sixty-five. Feel free to contact me on 0451 146 438. Best regards, Marte Chorsic. So, Marte, I hope you find the love of your life. Oh, no. It's a specific requirement. Yeah, very, very specific. I mean, hate to be specific. Oh, but... look. The man, knows, <laughs> no, man what, knows what he wants. man knows what he wants. man knows what he wants. <laughs> oh, no. Give, just give him a call and see if we can teach him to adjust his Tinder <laughs> <the whole> settings. <laughs> Make one for him. Maybe we should give him a call. <laughs> Bring him on the air. Oh, I mean, Martin, the, if been, nothing happens uh, for you in the next few weeks, maybe you can come on and we can do something for you on the live show. Something like that. But yeah, nice friends. Uh, 7.30 this Friday night. Come down. Make yourselves heard. If you haven't already bought a membership... Now's a yeah. great time to buy one. They'll still be on sale. Wonderful merchandise will also be on sale in the in the <laughs> merchandise kiosk. We've I got have, the jerseys, jackets, polos. I have uh, heard a little a little whisper from a friend of mine that we uh, we've got some new signage coming up around the stadium for Friday night. So, oh, good, good. Yeah. So something to look out for our for our regular merch, supporters. Merch slinger will be very excited. Mm, our peddler of merchandise, <laughs> Jerome. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, it's always fun at Nice Stadium, 7.30 this Friday night. Yeah, look, By membership, the admin office will be open. Yeah. Yeah. Come down, support support the team. It's going to be a massive game. Looking to chalk up our first home win of the, or first win of the season. And I think the boys have got a good chance to do it. I'm expecting a big bounce back after last week's performance. Let's come in, knock out the three points and celebrate afterwards. Maybe we'll get a, another sing-along from our president this week. All right, yes, I've just been, I uh, just got a little hot tip. Merch kiosk will be opened from 6.30 p.m. We haven't put our jackets that I'm wearing <laughs> on the online store yet, so this is your perfect chance to buy it before they do because I don't think they'll last very long. Nice fans. So if you want to grab one, grab one in person. Yeah, those jackets uh, have been flowing out like hotcakes. Yeah. That is very true. So grab one in person. Merch kiosk will be open from 6.30 p.m. onwards. We'll see you there on Friday night, guys. Uh, we'll cut to a short break and then we'll come back and wrap things up. Thank you. 
The Night Train is brought to you by St Andrews Hotel, 128 Nicholson Street, Fitzroy. Beautifully crafted, cosy and intimate spaces for your drinking and dining experiences. Life is too short for bad internet and the customer service that comes with it. At Mate, we pride ourselves in providing great value NBN internet and service that Aussies deserve. Let us be your defence on the field and save yourself against bad internet. Mate is made by football fans for football fans. Choose a provider you can trust like a mate. Call us on 13 14 13 or visit letsbemates.com.au to sign up today. See you soon, mate. Introducing Lanco Group for innovative engineering consulting services. Lanco Group provides superior civil engineering and innovative solutions to developers, local government and service authorities. Working closely with clients, Lanco Group helps meet the complex infrastructure requirements for residential, commercial and industrial developments. On time, on budget. Find out more at lancogroup.com.au. Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. Australia's largest corporate soccer tournament is coming your way. And the grand prize for the entire winning team? Seven tickets to fly to Spain and watch a La Liga game. The Legends Cup, together with global football partner La Liga and powered by Vitamin D Guru, kicks off in Melbourne on the 21st of March, with the finals on the 28th of March. It's a five-a-side comp, and you and six colleagues could be flying to Spain for a dream La Liga experience. Remember, you don't have to be a professional footballer to join. The champions get to watch a major La Liga match, go sightseeing, on a stadium tour, and enjoy the best Spain has to offer. Spots are running out fast. Go to legendscupofficial.com.au. That's legendscupofficial.com.au and book your team in now. Are you looking to change your destiny in life? Be your own boss? Start your own business? If you are, you need people who understand your needs and are committed to helping you make it happen. At DKP & Co Chartered Accountants, we are more than just accountants. We are business advisors, taxation consultants and strategists that specialised in setting up businesses. We understand the client and give them the very best customised advice and strategies to achieve their goals. Visit our website dkpco.com.au or give us a call today on 03 9023 9370. Fast, proactive, personal. That's DKP and Co Chartered Accountants. Kick off 2020 with thrilling savings at Northern Motor Group. As a proud FNR supporter, Northern Motor Group are offering new deals across their new and used car range. Two huge locations, nine popular brands to choose from, including Jeep, Chrysler, Fiat, Abar, Isuzu Ute, Kia, MG, Nissan and their newest edition, Ram. Find your new car this new year. Visit northernmotorgroup.com.au, your one-stop shop for sales, services and parts in the northern suburbs. Northern Motor Group, Grimshaw Street, Bandura, driving Melbourne's north, LMCT 6595. Welcome back. So to, to wrap things up tonight, we'll just go for a quick look through the ladder. So we've got Hume sitting on first, St Albans in second, Oakley Cannons at third, then on Thunder sitting fourth, Heidelberg at fifth, Port Melbourne in sixth, Bentley Greens seventh, South Melbourne in eighth, Avondale th on three points just above us on at tenth on two, then on City with a one point and Green Gully, Altona Magic and Eastern Lions all tied for last with no points. Yeah. I mean, yeah, human first and open second. Yeah. That win against us really took them up. Yeah. So look credit to them that they're second on the ladder. Yeah, that's it. Um, but yeah, I guess it is what it is. And we'd yeah, say look, our, it's our a good opportunity for us around. next week to knock off, you know, Hume top of the table. And, you know, it's going to be a big, big weekend for the club. Uh, guys, we were going to preview the NPL round, but I think it's time to open up the doghouse instead. Oh, open up the doghouse. In tonight's special feature, we hear their thoughts on where the game has been and where it's heading. You can't handle the truth! You want really to say something? Open up the doghouse. Open up the doghouse. Rover, Rover. 
Move it over to cats are coming in. Yes, we've opened up the talk back lines and Bubba Ilitsa is with us once again. <laughs> Bubba, are you with Hello, us? Bo- Hello, boys. Anthony, how long do we show Bubba Nooko? How are you? I'm good, Bubba. How are you? I'm oh, very sad. Very sad? What's, what's oh, that? Cross it. No mean yesterday. But it doesn't matter. Hamish come tonight. We, we're singing dinner my song and then I turn it off and then we put on hot nights and we're <laughs> dancing in the, in the lounge room. Practice for dancing with the stars. <laughs> <laughs> Which landroom was that, Bubba? Which landroom are you in? Sounds like a, is, 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 is it the, the sound of is it the front like lounge? Um, is it the back landroom or the front one that no one's allowed to sit in? Well, you know, business party at the front, business at the back. <laughs> the other way that reminds me. What do you think of Hamish's new haircut this season, Bubba? Hamish hairstyle is uh, look like a homeless man. <laughs> <laughs> He was doing walkabout yesterday, so maybe he's, I don't know, he's come from somewhere. I'm not sure where he's come from. Bubba, your voice is <laughs> a little raspy there. Raspy. So you're all right. Yeah, I was on the hill with Pavel. I had to protect him. <laughs> I was very upset. You, uh, you were here in Melbourne. <laughs> yeah, Bubba come to Melbourne. Yeah, she come to St. Albans with a handbag. Some man, he'd say, he tried to rob me. I hit him over the head. <laughs> <laughs> you showed them. Oh, you you showed them. I think it. it was that man, that man, Holofkar. His name called Holoka, and then I hit him across the head with my handbag. <laughs> oh, I, think, he, I don't think you're the only one thinking of smacking him across the well, head over the weekend, Bubba. Yeah, he's the run, run away with his tail carry. between his legs. Sorry, what was that, Bubba? He ran away with his tail between his legs. <laughs> I Sorry, give him quick one-two. One 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 quick one-two. That's something the team was lacking yesterday. No one-two. <laughs> Maybe we'll get there was three, four, but not one, two. Three, four, no one. Yeah. No. <laughs> Missed the one, two. Went straight for the three, four, and it, nothing. Never no good. Oh, yeah, the short, sharp, you know. But I tell you, Hamish, he's got very quick feet in the lounge room. He's dancing very good. <laughs> Did <laughs> you have a quick one, two step with Hamish, Baba? Oh, yeah, yeah. What step song? Step over this, that. But it, uh, what like song did Slavita you dance said, to? Hot nights. Hot nights. <laughs> did you come down for magazine, Baba? No, I don't like my magazine. Oh, you're one of those. Yeah. Maybe before many years I like that adult magazine, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> keep it PG, Bubba. Oh, please. Keep it yeah. PG, Bubba. <laughs> okay. Thanks for calling, Bubba. Anyway, that's cool. No worry. Thanks, Bubba. We'll see you at the game this Friday. If anyone sees my grandmother this Friday, make sure yeah. to say hello. And, and stay away from sit. that handbag. <laughs> and stay away from that handbag. It's it's quite deadly. Yeah, if you see me, give me back, please. <laughs> Thanks, oh, Bubba. Thank like you, Bubba. Oh, and, pa- and to President Pavel, I should say, Nedai Sefina. <laughs> President Pavel, Nedai Sefina. Always a good yeah, sentiment. Stay strong, my son. <laughs> thank you. He's a little bit lose the plot. Anyway, Bob, losing your voices. I'm really a man. Bye, boys. <laughs> 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 oh no And on that note I think it's time to wrap up For this week We look forward to seeing you all Down at Summer Street 7.30 Friday night For a massive game Against Hume City See you there This Friday night Night yeah. fans Gates open 6.30 Come in and Have a great night guys And just before we wrap up Just a quick shout out It's my it's my father's birthday today So Marte Happy birthday Wish you all the best And I'll see you at oh, work you Tomorrow morning You've been crucified at home If you've not mentioned that Yeah yeah Well oh, definitely I think Oof. I might have got home To my shit sitting in the yeah. driveway <laughs> Thanks, guys, for listening. We'll uh, we'll catch you next week when the Nitrate returns, 8 p.m. on Football Nation Radio and Facebook Live. Jive la Croatia. I think the Knights, their time has arrived. I think last week, the 10-man performance in the preliminary final was absolutely acceptable.